that looks so good. Look at that finish. Ooh, but over here does not look good. But in this video, we're gonna use this simple can to get this surface prepared so it can look this good in the future. And what's going on guys? It's so nice to be back here in the home garage. I gotta say, I've been having a time of my life. I took a week off from my regular job over at the dealership painting cars and I'm here after my day job, which is just being a regular old PE County teacher. That's my career. Yes, it is. And I'm here for the week and I get to spend the time in the garage working on the Corvette project that's been taking way too much time. For those of you that have had a project sitting for a long time in the garage, let me know in the comments. Right now we're pushing one year <laughs> and this is all we've got. But when you work two jobs every day from 7 a.m. to 8, 30, 9 p.m. and then you're trying to put up the videos, I guess a third job, it's a lot. So I've decided, you know what, let's chill on the videos and let's make videos that are fun and entertaining and informative to get better quality content out there and honestly help out my own mental health of not being so stressed. And guys, I'm telling you, I'm feeling really good right now working on this Corvette. So if you guys don't know what's been happening here is we got the front end painted. We're doing this in sections. We're using the OEM Select Paint by Eastwood. And we decided that we're gonna be doing it in sections because, well, the paint booth we have in our garage is small and it's not really a good idea to paint too, too much at one time. So today what we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna show you guys how to get your paint even closer to a paint job. You can see here, we still have some body repairs here and we have some minor bondo that we were doing on the actual vehicle. You can see that anywhere here, this is sanded clear coat. So I'm gonna be honest, it doesn't really need anything. You can put the paint right over it and we're trying to keep this as do it yourself as possible. So we're not gonna overcomplicate too much of the process, but there will be some times where you just need to do some Bondo work and that's just what we did already. This is sanded with a 180 grit. So this will take a 320, we'll sand that down prior to getting it all primered up. And what you guys really need to remember is it's not all about about how beautiful it looks. Stop focusing on the shine, stop focusing on the application, and let's first take a step back and let's prevent any issues. Look at this paint. Do you see how smooth it is, guys? Do you see the smoothness of this paint? Do you see any wrinkles? Do you see any solvent pop? Do you see any fish eyes? Well, let me tell you something. It all starts with the preparation and the products that you're using. So if you're using cheap dupe color products, you're not gonna get the best finish. And although we do use these in our videos, there's different tiers of auto body. And which tier is right for your project is up to you. If it's something you just wanna make look nicer and it's a quick little project, then fine. Use your dupe color, but don't expect perfect results, even though it says perfect right there. Okay, and then we have a little bit higher upgrade. This is a high performance flexible primer surfacer. Now I do need the surfacer when it comes to filling up these little guys right here. However, this is still a spray can finish. That is a 1K finish, 1K, one part, meaning that it's just what it is. You spray it and that's it. And the problem you're gonna have with these guys is most of these guys are 1K are just a lacquer base product and what's going to happen when you put real paint over it well have you ever seen those wrinkles or that wrinkling around the paint it's when real paint out of solvent or whatever it might be urethane it attacks the edges all right and this doesn't have anything to harden up the edges it's a 1k product so really it stays open for a very very long time and when you get paint underneath one of the edges of your primer it's going to lift it so even though i do need a surfacer primer i'm going to tell you that i'm going to use what i have and for this video i'm going to use 2k no matter what it is. I'm all out of the 2K high build surfacer, which we've used in other videos and works great, 
but I'd much rather use a 2K product. Even though it's an epoxy product, it still will work over fiberglass and a lot of different surfaces as well. And it's going to have a great adhesion. And we'll be able to lightly sand it. The only downside right now is it's gonna take a little bit longer to dry, but hey, we've already waited a year to paint this thing. What's another two days, really? So basically, what we're gonna be using today is we're gonna be using the 2K Epoxy Primer. And sure, I can just use my spray gun and my regular 2K urethane primer, but, you know, the whole point of this channel is to use products that you can use in your home garage, and you don't need a fancy, expensive compressor setup system like this unless you're serious about doing this. Now what we have on a vehicle is just a glaze for minor scratches and minor pits. It is once again 2K, that means it has a two part. This hardens it up so it dries and doesn't shrink back or doesn't shrink back as much. Now, a lot of people look at this and you'll say, well, Brian, this looks just like a spray can. And I'm gonna tell you, yeah, it, it does. But here is the difference. Inside of the spray can, there is a bladder and a bladder like a containment of 2K catalyst. And a catalyst is going to mix with the regular primer when you use this red top right here. And we're not gonna do it yet, but we'll show you in just a little bit. You're gonna use this red top and you're gonna use this stem right here in conjunction together. When you put it on a hard surface, it makes a pop, and that's what pops the bag inside. And then it's kind of like a ticking time bomb, but I will say you will get at least, I would say three to four hours out of it if you keep it in a cool environment, maybe even refrigerator, before it starts to kick. So we're not gonna initiate the process yet until we get the rest of our sanding done, and let's show you some minor preparation. Now this would be the last place on the car that I need to sand before doing the primer. And I just have a little uh, 3M block here with 180. And you don't need to go crazy with the paper. But what I want to do really is just block it out. And this is glaze, so I like to sand glaze with 180. You don't need to use 80 for this really necessarily. Glaze is going to be your basically your last step, your last um pass unless it's like a minor scratch then it would be your only step and uh, 180 is going to fill in with primer but why not just sand it down and smooth it out with a 320 which is what we'll do here in just a moment so once you get it all blocked up and then you'll be ready for your 320 and after sanding with 180 you can see these really aggressive 180 scratches we don't want to fill these with our um, primer because it can shrink a little bit into that and then it will continue to shrink until the paint goes on and we want to make sure that it is completely smooth. So what we're going to use here is our sander and we're going to have 320 on it and our 320, we're going to extend it into this area and we're actually going to bridge these two repairs together. So instead of sanding this area and sanding this area, we're going to bring this whole area together and then we can formally prime the whole area. And that's just it. That's all we need, a 320 scratch. This already sanded it with 600. This area does not need to be primed. This area does need to be primed. And we are using our 3M extract sander. This thing really works well. You know, pay now so later you don't have a dusty environment if you wanna really keep your garage clean. I ended up buying this stuff. A lot of the times stuff is sent to me on the channel, but I really wanna give it a good try and I'm really happy with it. It's very easy to use. It was a little bit pricey, around 900 bucks plus the sander, but I'm really happy with the choice so far. So uh, it's got a nice even sand scratch right here. So all we gotta do is continue around to where our areas were that were sanded like in this area. So we would wanna extend this whole area um, to be sanded. And then on the other side as well, we had some very minor scratching towards the bottom here, so we'll sand those. Now, this whole area, it doesn't need primer. You know, a lot of guys think that in order for me to paint, I have got to primer it. That's not the case, okay? This whole area, this was in good condition. This particular guy right here, I remember for whatever reason, this is gonna need primer, but this didn't. 
Okay, this was in good condition. I don't know why, but this was all burnt up into this area. So anyways, we're gonna go ahead and finish up with the sanding and then we'll get it primed up. And we're back and we got it all masked up and there's a couple areas that we still need to scuff. And guys, I found some other scratches a little bit lower here on a door. My son has been using his Hot Wheels cars and using the door as a road. So yeah, I took a little bit more 320 and we're gonna do the tops of the doors. Some of you might say, why not just primer the whole entire door? Well, that is a good option if this is like a true restoration. But really, we just had a little bit of dead paint only here on the top. And this is only a 600 grit scratch, so we don't need to prime over it. But I do have my K600. This is equivalent to uh, the cutting speed of a P320. And it leaves a K600 grit scratch. And I'm just gonna use it in those areas that aren't really gonna get too much primer but we wanna make sure that there is a scratch there because we don't ever wanna put paint on an area where there is unsanded um, clear coat. And that's what we have here. That's why it's so important to remove as much as you can. I understand, uh, depending on the job, you might not be able to remove everything, but, but this is a job I'm doing in my garage and I have time and I wasn't really comfortable removing too much because it's an older vehicle and I really only work on Hondas, but um, it wasn't too bad. I went on the good old YouTube and I figured out how to do it. I mean, how great is that? There's people on YouTube that teach you how to do things. Well, that's awesome. I learned something too. So we're gonna finish up here on the edges where there's just a little bit of shiny paint making sure that we have everything completely sanded down. And this is a hand pad, like an interface pad, and it's like a little cushion and it really helps you be a little bit more nimble in those areas. All right, so once it's all sanded down, it's ready to get cleaned off. And for cleaning, we're using a pre-painting prep, and this is gonna remove any of the contaminants that are still in the surface if you didn't initially get them. You always wanna make sure you clean prior to using any sort of uh, primer or whatever it might be because if there's anything in between the paint and the uh, new um, material you're putting down it can cause adhesion issues in the future. I'm using these microfiber tear away sheets they're like paper towels they're really good I'll leave the link in the description but basically they come on a roll and honestly they're great because you can reuse them a couple times and then toss them. You don't have to worry about like the traditional ones having to either waste them and throw them away or wash them. So pretty cool. You can even get them at Walmart. Now we have our 2K aerosol epoxy primer. Now this is the same for any of these cans. You got to get your red little cap here and you affix it to that stem, which is right there. And now listen up. When you hear this sound, listen up. Okay, it's like a click. It's engaged now. Now you really wanna give it a good shake, give it a good two to three minute shake, make sure everything is completely mixed up. Remember, we have a bladder and we have primer. They need to be completely mixed up in order for this to be a true 2K um, epoxy primer. And now we're ready to spray. We're gonna put on two coats. We're gonna give it about a 10, 15 minutes in between time. This stuff will still build just a little bit, which was what we like. Now, I would never recommend this over huge repairs. Guys, we're talking little scratches, even feathered out paint. Something like this works just fine. I would use your spray gun and a thicker, um, 2K urethane primer if you don't have any exposed metal, if you're doing bigger body work. But guys, if you're just doing small stuff like this, you know, you don't want a reaction. And you know how sometimes you get the rings around the paint? That's from using that cheaper primer sometimes that can happen. If you're using anything 2K, you're gonna really decrease the amount of issues that you have. Get a little spray pattern. Oh, that's pretty thick. Check that out, okay. All right, all right. Look at that. And that's all I wanna do here because I had just a little bit of burnt paint and I wanna make sure that that's sealed and it's sealed in. Everything else was good. You know, the tops is where the, the real issues were with this car as far as uh, burnt paint. Now it did have at one point a, um, a carbon fiber wrap so that really did help it contain the amount of uh, issues it had with the sun damage. Hit up this area. Okay. It's almost like a light white or light gray. Over here in our body work areas. Let's hit this up. 
Nice, nice, nice. Filling it in really nice. And over in here, we have some feathered areas. Very nice. We'll hit up the top area here. And after 30 minutes, we had applied two coats and this is what it's looking like. It's ready to go. Now, a lot of people will tell you now, epoxy is not really meant to be sanded and it's not. You're not gonna use it necessarily as your only primer if you're doing a full restoration job, but this is different. We used it just for burn throughs and we used it just for some light scratches that were glazed with some polyester filler. So what we will do in this type of situation is we can lightly go over this in a couple days. We'll let it really dry. We'll use maybe a little bit of water and some 400 so it doesn't gum up and it will be perfectly smooth. Now, I would never recommend to you epoxying your whole car and then going right into paint. But if you're using it here just for spots, it will work just the way we did use it here. I would probably recommend you use that 2K Surfacer Primer, but it's all we had today and I wanted to show you that it still will work. Now, a lot of people do ask, what is the proper way for doing complete body work? Well, the best possible way if you're doing a complete restoration or even if you're sanding off most of the paint, is you wanna get the whole body in epoxy primer. You don't wanna use the cans if it's the whole body because you want something thicker and cheaper. It's gonna be cheaper, believe it or not. Getting a compressor and getting the paint equipment and faster than doing it in cans because they, they will add up after a while. So you wanna get everything completely in epoxy and then from there, let that epoxy dry, give it a little scuff. I would say maybe like a 320 scuff where you're gonna do your body work all right, so you scuff up, do your body work, and then you can do your 2K urethane high build primer over that. And if you sand it through the metal, then you can re-epoxy those areas. Or if it's small enough, just, just do a little bit of self etching. But for our project, the epoxy worked out great. So we'll give it a couple days and it'll be ready to prepare further. We'll check it out and see if it's ready for paint. Well, that's gonna wrap up our project for today. And always remember that the steps before the paint job are probably the most important steps that you can take so your paint job stays looking good. Guys, this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it, it's just paint. I see you guys on the next episode.